So let's have a look at the first question I have here. The diagram below shows Tom's ladder leaning against a vertical wall. The ladder is five meters long. It makes an angle of B with the horizontal ground. The distance from the base of the ladder to the wall is three meters. The vertical height of the top of the ladder is Y. Now it can be very hard to figure out what the hell is happening from the story. Okay, so thankfully in many cases they give us a diagram. So the ladder is five meters long. Okay, and it's leaning against the wall. It makes an angle of B with the horizontal ground. The distance from the base of the ladder into the wall is three meters. And the vertical height of the top of the ladder is Y. So in other words, the ladder is slanty. If you were just to go straight down, that's what they're calling Y. Okay, so what I tend to do um, in the wordy ones is I will draw my own triangle over here, very like theirs, but without all the words. Okay, so I tend not to look then over here if I get intimidated by it. Instead, I look at my diagram, which is all the important information out of the story that's in the question. Okay, the second thing you'll always see on my questions is silly old Harry, caught a heron, trawling off America. Even if I don't end up using it, that is there in the corner. And what it does is it tells whoever's correcting your, your paper that you understand this is a trig question and they are some of the tools you will use for trig. Okay, so now use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the value of y was the first question they asked. Do you want to give it a try? And put the answer into the chat. Okay, so if you look at this one, use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the value of y. Okay, so from the log tables, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that is the first thing you put down and you get marks for doing that. Of course you do because you knew what the theorem of Pythagoras was. Doesn't mean you know how to use it, but it means you at least know what the theorem of Pythagoras was. And these are all in the log tables, which is why um, it makes perfect sense to get to know the log tables and write them down. Okay, now, what does it mean? Well, it means that um, it has to be the hypotenuse out here. So it has to be the hypotenuse squared equals the other side squared, okay? So what is my hypotenuse? Okay, it's the one opposite the right angle. So that means five squared has to go here. And then for A and B, it doesn't really matter what I call A and B. Um, if I go by the log tables, A is the side opposite the angle, um, which would be my Y. And three would be my B. So I'd have Y squared plus three squared. Okay, um, so just to go over that again, it's the hypotenuse squared, which is five in this question. So five squared equals Y squared plus three squared. I'm perfectly okay here to go three squared plus um, Y squared. It, it really doesn't matter the order here because adding doesn't matter. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, two plus three is the same as three plus two. So the order of adding doesn't matter, which is why it doesn't matter which way these go. Okay, let's work it out. So on your calculator, five squared is 25. Y squared is Y squared and three squared is nine. So it's not three by two to give you six, it's three by three, three squared. Okay, I need to solve for Y squared. So bring over the nine, whichever way you do it, or minus nine from both sides. And I have 16 being equal to y squared. Now I need to solve for y, look, not y squared. So the opposite of squared, I'm just going to write it the opposite way. Okay, so no difference here, I just swapped. Okay, because my brain prefers when the letter is on the left. That's the only reason I do it mathematically, it's no different. The opposite of squared is square root. So technically what I'm doing is getting the square root of both sides. 
and the square and the square root cancel. Okay, so that I'm left with y being equal to the square root of 16, which if you put it into the calculator is four. Okay. Right, so now we're on part B. So I'm just gonna tidy up this one a little bit and just go y is equal to four up there and clean off the bottom to give me some room. Okay. Below are three statements about the angle B in the diagram. Put a tick in the correct box to show which one is true. Tick one box only. So what it's saying is cos B is equal to three over five, sine B is equal to three over five, or tan B is equal to three over five. So how you figure this out is, is, is up here, silly old Harry. Okay, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my sides. So if this is my angle here, B, okay, then this is the side opposite B. This is the side adjacent to B. And of course, the one opposite my right angle is always my hypotenuse. Okay, so now how do I figure out if it's sine cos tan? Well, I'm looking for the numbers, the ones in the question they've asked me is three and five. So I have a look and see what sides are three and five. And I see that three is the adjacent and I see five is the hypotenuse. Okay, so I come up here now to silly old Harry and I go, which one links adjacent and hypotenuse? There's adjacent, there's hypotenuse. So the one that links those two particular sides together is cos. Okay, so my tick would go in cos. Okay. So that's that question. I'm just going to um, make up another question. Uh, what links y, we now know y is four. What links four over three together? Okay, well, how would I do that question? Well, I know, well, I label the sides first. So he's still opposite, adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, so it's four over three that I'm looking for this time. So there's my four. There's my three. Okay, so I come back up to, oh, I cleaned that off. Okay, I can, I come back up to my silly old Harry, to my sine cos tan and go, right, what is linking opposite and adjacent together, and it's tan. So out here, I would have had tan of the angle, tan B equals four over three. Okay, and that's how these identities work. They just link different options of sides together. Sine links opposite and adjacent together. Cos, no, opposite and hypotenuse together. Cos links adjacent and hypotenuse together and tan links opposite and adjacent. So that is really the only difference between them. Okay. So now we've worked out cos B is equal to three over five. And then the question said, hence work out the size of the angle B. So I would have had cos B being equal to three over five. Okay, I need to know the angle B, not cos of B, but just B the angle. So I just want B the angle, I don't want cos B, okay? So the opposite of cos is cos inverse. So do you remember up here, we, um, to go from y squared to y, we did the opposite of squared, which was square root, okay? Well, down here, we do more or less the opposite of cos, which is cos inverse. and we get the cos inverse of both sides. Okay, so cos inverse, cos B is cos inverse three over five. So there's my original, cos B is equal to three over five. 
What I've done now is just get the cos inverse of both sides. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay, and what you'll see is cos inverse and cos cancel, and that's how I'm left with just B here on this side. And into your calculator, put cos inverse of three over five. So will you do that for me there now? And just put in cos inverse three over five, make sure you can find it on your calculator, and see do you get, I'm getting 53.1 degrees. Okay, so see do you get that? It's rounded to one decimal place, which is why I said 53.1. Right, so before I move on to the next question, if you'll allow me, I just want to show you something. So I'm gonna rub out my triangle, I'm gonna rub out Pythagoras' theorem, okay? Um, and I want to show you that it didn't matter whether I used cos, sine, or tan in them. So I'm going to pick another one, I'm going to pick, I'll change my color so that you can see that this is the extra bit. So this is not in the question, okay? But we did know that our y was four. We worked it out from Pythagoras' theorem, okay? So I'm going to use sine in this case. So sine b, and what I'm doing is I'm going to solve this for b again and show you that I also get 53.1 degrees again. So sine b, I can't use three over five in this case because sine is opposite over um, hypotenuse. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. So not three over five as it was for cos, it's four over five because I'm using sine. Okay, and just like before, I'll get the sine inverse of both sides. Okay, sine inverse and sine will cancel and I'll get B being equal to the sine inverse of four over five, okay? So I'm popping onto my calculator again. I'd like if you did the same and put four over five. And of course I get 53.1 degrees. Okay. And of course I could do the same with tan and you can work this one out the long way of yourself. yourself. If I do the tan inverse of four over three, why four over three? Because it's opposite over adjacent, of course, I'm going to get 53.1 degrees again. Okay, so when I did the bit in blue, I wasn't trying to confuse you, I hope I don't, but what I was trying to show you was that it doesn't matter if you use sine, cos or tan, because one of the most important questions I get asked is how do you know which one to use? And my answer is it doesn't matter which one you use because they all give you the same answer. They all give you the same size angle, okay? What does matter is what information you have. So remember when I didn't have the side y is equal to four, I have no option but to use cos because cos is the only one of those three identities that links together adjacent and hypotenuse. So I have to use cos because I don't know what y is. But once I have all three sides, like we did when we found y using Pythagoras' theorem, then it doesn't matter which one I use. Okay.